Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. We are going to deal with two pretty hard looking limits today. This one and also this one where capital L denotes the limit as n approaches infinity. And we need this thing right here for theorem, just like another video I did before. So those are all prerequisites but you need them. And in my opinion, it's not too obvious to see at the first glance what this is going to evaluate to in the limit, okay? Just as a little hint, this function and this function are asymptotically equal. So yeah, maybe this already rings a bell for you. So we are going to dive right in. There's not much to, to say, so this is really easy to calculate, even though it looks pretty horrible. So at first, I want you guys to consider the recurrent relation of our gamma function right here. So if we have gamma of z, for example, this is nothing but z times uh, z minus one, I'm terribly sorry, because that's z minus one factorial times gamma of z minus one, okay? <clears throat> so what we can do, we can reduce the argument by one in here, put this argument to the front and write the gamma function with this new argument right here. Okay, so this is something we have learned about before. You can prove this using the various definitions of the gamma function we have derived in previous videos. How is this useful in this case right here? Well, um, on another note, S and our A are just constants in some way and also n and k are element of natural numbers just to get this out of the way. So what we can basically do, we can use this property right here a lot of times on this denominator to kind of get rid of our gamma function that we have right here. And we want to get to a certain point that this gamma function that we get after using the recurrence relation over and over again is going to cancel out with this n minus one factorial because n minus one factorial up there is nothing but gamma of n. How can we get gamma of n out of gamma of this whole chunk? Well, by using the recurrence relation of this thing right here, exactly a plus s minus one over k times, okay? Try to follow me there. We're just going to take a look at the denominator right here. So gamma of a plus n plus s minus one over k is nothing but, okay, what we do, we reduce this thing right here by one, and then we are going to multiply this argument by the gamma function of this reduced argument. So this is nothing but a. Um, I'm going to put it like this, n plus a plus s minus one over k minus one. Okay, so this is the part that's really important, times gamma of, okay, this argument n plus a plus s minus one over k minus one. This has been the first iteration. If we do another iteration, we are going to multiply this whole chunk or this argument right here by this argument reduced by one and then times the gamma function of this argument reduced by one. So our next term is going to be n plus a plus s minus one over k minus two times the gamma function of this very same argument. If we do this whole process, like I said, a plus s minus one over k times, okay? We are going to get, after a lot of iterations, we don't know how many, integer iterations in some way. We are going to get, okay, this right here is going to result in the gamma function of n plus this chunk minus this very chunk is just gamma of n, just what we wanted, n minus one factorial times this, then another one, another one, another one, and the last member of this product that we are going to have, this final product is just going to be n, okay? So it's this times blah, 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 times blah, 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 times n, okay? So we are going to denote this using the product notation, let's say we let it run over i being equal to one right here, okay? To, well, our argument up here, a plus s minus one over k, and we are going to get n plus a plus s minus one over k, minus i. I hope you were able to follow me on what I just did here. Also, I want you guys to consider another thing. So um, let's use a simple example. I don't want to write every and each term out on here. So if we have the product from um, i being equal to one to three, for example, of let's say two plus i 
what is this going to give us? This is going to give us, well, nothing but 2 plus 1 times 2 plus 2 times 2 plus 3. Okay, this is what we are going to get on this final product. What we have exactly here is a factor of 2 in all of these right here. Okay, in the front, this is our constant term. And I want you guys to, uh, to notice the fact that n is just our constant term that we are writing with a 2 right here. So that's basically the same situation that we have up here. Meaning we can factor out the 2. So a 2 here, a 2 here, a 2 here, giving us 2 to the third power. 2 to the power up here. Okay, our highest argument in, in the product when it uh, runs from 1. Okay, times um, different chunk that we have right here. So all of those terms divided by 2. Okay, naturally. Meaning we can factor out an n right here. And then we are going to have this product of all those terms right here times n. Okay, we are bringing the n to the outside. Meaning we can also bring the n to the a plus s minus 1 over k power to the outside. Okay, this is n to the a plus s minus 1 over k power times a final product. Of. Okay, this is going to give us 1. Okay, this has been just a side note. 1 plus. Okay, and then we are going to have a plus s minus 1 over k minus i over n. I'm going to put it like this. Because, you see, this is where the good thing starts. This has been our denominator that we had. Meaning, gamma of n and n minus 1 is going to cancel out in the limit. Also, we have this factor of n to the a plus s minus 1 over k power. There's a lot of stuff to say. Cancelling out with this. So up here in the numerator we are going to have the limit of 1 over. All that's really left is this and that cancelled out and we are going to be left with this. This is just a final product meaning under the condition that the limit exists we can track the limit on all of those terms, meaning we can track the limit to the inside of here. Meaning we are going to get the, the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 plus this chunk over n. When n approaches infinity, this is going to give us 0. And this is just going to be the product of 1 with itself a plus s minus 1 over k times. 1 to any power is just 1. Meaning in the limit, this product thing right here is just going to give us 1. I hope you could follow me on everything I did here. Take a piece of paper, try it out for yourself, that's the best thing you can do. I tried to make it as intuitive as possible. Meaning this limit is just one. Like I said, those factorial things are asymptotically equal. Okay, now we are going to continue with the next one. It's basically the same thing that we had here. k times n minus 1 factorial is nothing but gamma of k times n, meaning we can rewrite the, the denominator as nothing but, okay, this is k times a plus n times k. We are going to iterate our recurrence relation of the gamma function exactly k times a times, because this is going to leave us by this argumentation that we had right here, and this is <laughs> absolutely ugly looking gamma, n times k. Okay, cancelling out with this thing that we have up here. So that's already cool. It's the same process. This is going to be way faster this time because we were talking about everything before. i being equal to 1 to k times a of, okay, how does this look? This is nothing but n times k plus i um, plus k times a. I'm terribly sorry. Minus i. This way. This very way. Meaning, once again, if we factor out, the factor of n times k that we also have up here. This is going to provide us with gamma of n times k. Then we are going to get had, have. Uh, then we are going to get have. have I'm, I'm terribly sorry for being English retarded. N times k to the. Okay, those were k times a iterations to the k times a power times this product right here. Of um, okay, this is going to provide us with one plus a over n in this case minus i over n times k. Meaning, once again, in the limit as n approaches infinity, this term is going to go to 0, this is going to go to 0, providing us with 1. Also, we have n times k to the k times a power to the k power. <laughs> Meaning, this is going to cancel out with this. Gamma of n times k is nothing but k times n minus 1 factorial, canceling out with this. Overall, in the limit, this goes to 1 once again. 
I hope this didn't feel rushed. I'm terribly sorry for my not good English today. I'm, I'm terribly sorry. Um, I already had a long way to do this morning, so um, I have to calm down a little bit. And in a few minutes, I'm going to do theoretical physics homework. So that's going to be fun, 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 fun. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and recommend the channel. If you like, if you want to support the channel a bit more, take a look into the description there. You will find links to Patreon, to Spreadshirt, to Teespring, and also to my Quora questions probably that you can click on to support the channel um, actively without spending any of your money. No matter what you do, I thank you guys for watching. Up until the next video, have a, that's a crazy Jojo move right here. Jojo day. <laughs> See ya.